tonight's webinar. Again, my name is Sean. Tonight we're just going to be covering some kind of just some basic designing, um, use of live templates, um, fonts, rhinestones, some, you know, a little bit of basic of everything. Um, we're going to work with some live text, how to get those kind of cut ready. I know Matt did that today, um, so we'll touch in on that a little bit as well. And then mostly from there, creating mock-ups with the designs we're going to use. So in the software, there's a lot of different, uh, we have a whole mock-up page in the mock-up creator. We won't go into the creator too much tonight, um, but we do have some free webinars just on the creator and the mock-ups. Um, tonight's more going to be the mock-up page and how to send the designs over, how to set up your business information and everything like that. So if we have time, we might be able to use the creator a little bit, but I can also go in depth with the creator a little bit more on a, on a different webinar. So again, at any point, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. And um, as those come in, I'll answer as many as possible. So we have a couple designs that we're going to kind of um, create tonight. So here's kind of the end products of some of the designs we we're going to create. So I know you guys have seen the new stadium game day fonts and everything like that. So we'll definitely show you how to use that for setting up, whether it be a decal, a shirt, and how to create the live text that goes with it. That way, once you have one of these created, instead of every time you need one, changing it from baseball to football to soccer to any other sports, we can quickly edit that. And also with these tails, some of them, don't necessarily line up perfect, um, but we have a quick fix how to kind of fix any of those issues where it might the tail might not be as long as the text and everything like that. And then next we'll go into a little bit more of a complicated design, nothing crazy, um, pretty much just using basic shapes of Corel, but using our three color text um, and our text to path where you see the text up here. So. These are going to be set up in, as live templates. So at the end, if we wanted to, all the text in these design, well, not the top one, will be able to change the sport, but the bottom one will be able to change the name, the sport, the mascot, the year, everything like that. So we, you know, usually we'll want to try to set up as many of these designs as possible in live templates, just so future designing, it makes it a lot easier on us. Let me get rid of those. Just messing around a little bit earlier. So <clears throat> we'll start pretty basic with just the Indians text. And again, this is made from our stadium font. So it's a TOW stadium font. Um, if you guys have watched any of the lives or anything in the past couple weeks, this is easily probably one of our most popular fonts and it's only been released for about a month or less now. So we'll show you different ways to work with the tails and everything like that. So here we have our Indians, so again, we'll just write out the text first. Yeah, so this, all of our webinars will be on, uh, we'll eventually go to our YouTube channel. Um, it usually takes about 24 hours to render, but this one being free and stuff like that will be up pretty quickly. The registration link that you use tonight to get into the webinar, that will change to a recorded link. Um, so you can follow that to the recorded link, or you can just search our YouTube for creating designs and mock-ups, and you'll see it there too. So either way, it'll be up there, but it, the link you use tonight will eventually convert to a recorded link, so it's a lot easier to find that way. So I'm just going to make the Indians text a little bit bigger. And I'll go ahead and switch it to our TRW Stadium font. So once we have our text, the cool thing about this font is it has the tails already attached to this font. So if I hold shift and the number one, you'll see all the different tails that this font offers. Now, because of the text and how we originally set it up, you can notice how some of these tails are a little bit longer or don't match up to the text correctly. So with the with our font and with our text, we can easily kind of change that or edit that. So the easiest way I think of doing it, you kind of have two different ways. You can literally just draw the tail itself. So if I start a, its own font here, 
and just did the money sign and switched it to our stadium font. I can get the tail that way. And then I could just write out the Indians font by itself. And then I can go ahead and match it up this way. And then from here, I can just stretch out the Indians. And then I'm just going to line up the tail just like that. So we have it that way where we can kind of do one of each, the tail and the text. Or if you type it all out at the same time, and we're left more with this up here, this is kind of how I end up doing it, is just writing everything out. And then up top here we have the B. So that's going to break apart on each letter of our um, text. So when I hit the B, it will separate each one of my letters as individual text, including my tail. So once I do that, I can simply bring the tail in a little bit. Just reline it up. Or, of course, I can take all the Indians text, pull that out, and make it a little bit bigger, too. And then we're just lining up our tails. So, on if you're working out of the design software, you'll have this little two arrows right here. That's going to open up our fonts, kind of our font page for the software. And... Up top here you'll have this B and when you highlight over it's going to say break artistic text. So this button's a little bit different. There is a break apart in the Corel software too. So if I right click this you'll see it will have to be a welded or converted to text but once you do that you'll see the break curve apart as one of the options here too. Um, that break apart or break curve apart is different from ours up here. The reason why is because if I do that now, you'll see how it subtracts, kind of it fills that gap where the D originally was taken out, like the circle here. What the break apart does, if you right click and select break curve apart, it fills that and then you have two separate pieces. So we don't want that. We want to use the break apart up here, the B on our software. And that will individually break apart each one of our letters. Now, when we do that, it's very important that once we have everything set up, that we weld it back together. Because right now, if I go to the wireframe, you'll notice how all of my letters are individual still so we want all these to be overlap or to be kind of connected and that's going to be the weld button so I can just highlight my design click weld and then you can see how that's all fixed and that's nicely connected now if we want to go a little bit further you can see like little pieces here how they might not be lined up perfectly or you know you might see little pieces like that sticking out or even on the tail connecting here, depending on what tail we use, it might not always line up as nicely as it did on this one. So does every does people does everyone know how to quickly fix this these type of issues? Yeah, so we had a couple people answer it correctly. So the nodes are going to be the right, the correct answer and how to fix any issues like this. Um, and we had one person ask, what are all the letters up there mean? And up top here, I'll go over that in a second. So any, anyone that's new to our fonts and our font tab or anything like that, I'll go over all these in, uh, in a second. So the nodes, we want to adjust the nodes to kind of clean up these areas here to adjust those what you're gonna do is and you might have done it before without actually knowing but if you double click on your design you'll see these kind of blue dots or squares everywhere if you see this this is just all those little dots and squares that we have here those are our nodes so what these allow us to do is completely kind of control the design so if I wanted 
this S over here to come way up here, I can select one of those nodes and totally change the shape of my S. What we can also do with them is delete them. So when we have a little area like this where it's not smooth, it's kind of a little jagged, I can just highlight that section of nodes. There's three there. So I just highlight all three and hit delete. And you'll see how it just smooths that all out. Same thing down here, highlight those three, delete, and now it's a nice smooth rather than kind of those where those oversex over the overlaps kind of made it a little jagged. So instead of seeing that, most of the times you probably wouldn't really notice it with your designs or your customer wouldn't, but sometimes it helps with cutting and making it a little bit nicer. Um, but I tend to try to smooth that out a little bit if possible, especially on the tail. That's the place where you might see it the most. Now we want to be careful when we're adjusting these nodes because if we go too much, sometimes we'll delete a node that controls a lot and you can really start to see how it really affects like your tail. So that one there completely got rid of how the tail is actually supposed to look. So if you, you know, click too many or delete too many out, just hit the back button. So you have the back button right here on the software. That's going to be this red arrow. You have the undo button up here, or you can hit control Z on your keyboard and it will go back a step. So we just want to make sure we're not deleting any nodes that control too much. Like again, I could delete this one up top here on the S and it really changes the shape of the S now. So we want to be careful. We just want to kind of go through more smooth it out than, you know, really affect the way our design's looking. So any questions on the nodes or smoothing those out? Yeah, so, so same with the tail. Let's say this tail, maybe you wanted to come in a little bit more. You can totally adjust these tails as well, however you want. So you're gonna get all these, you know, I think there's eight or nine tails in this one pack, but even the tails you have, you can completely adjust. You can make this come out this way instead and be pointed in rather than, are pointing out rather than pointing in. So again, the once you once you have it welded, these nodes you can adjust as much as you want. If I wanted to bring the tail down a lot, I could do it that way. If I wanted my tail to be really skinny and have this little point, I could do it that way too. Hey Toy, happy belated birthday. Um, the font we're working on, this one is going to be that new stadium font. So real quick, we, um, we had someone ask a little bit um, five minutes ago about all the buttons up here. Yeah, it's a left double click. Sorry. So you're going to double click left. Or what you can do is if you click on it once and hit the space bar, it will show you the nodes as well too. So once you have it selected, if you hit the space bar, you'll see them that way too. And that might be a little bit easier. Sometimes with the double click, it ends up, you know, just not working right all the time. So it's a little safer to hit the space bar and then you'll still see all the different nodes. Yeah, you can control the way the nodes look in your <coughs> settings. So if you don't want them to be like squares or rectangles, you can change the way they look. Um, I'm not sure why someone was saying they got dashes before. I'm not sure why you'd have what the dashes would be for. Um, but if it was causing any problems, just let us know and send us a little picture of that and we can maybe see what's going on with that. But I'm not sure, not sure about the dashes. All right. 
All right, so real quick, um, these letters up here, they're not, most of them aren't too complicated. Um, the E is going to be just for like an edit text box. So if I had the word TRW, I can select this box or select the text and hit E. And it'll just bring up this edit text box. There's really not a big use to this. Um, just because I can simply change everything in here without using the edit text box, but we just added it in there as a feature. Um, but I can, you know, control it, change it to a different text, different point size, hit okay. And you'll see that take a, you know, have the changes right there. But again, all those settings are right there on your main screen anyways. So typically we, we won't use this edit text box too, too much. The next one is uh, U and that's just going to be for uppercase. So, and the next one, the next three are going to be uppercase, lowercase and title case. So you can just switch, switch really quickly just by clicking a button. So instead of like having to go through, change it all the caps and rewrite it, you just have a quick all uppercase, all lowercase or title case. So our two, what that does is we have special fonts that are two color fonts, um, our KO fonts, the rhinestone font that I have selected here. Most of them will say they're two color or you'll be able to see it in the font preview. So the two is just going to add that second color around your text for you. Now this is a special font that <coughs> knows that it has, it's a two color font. So when you do click the two, it knows to add that second color around it or through it. If you decide to use the number two when it's a one color font, it's just going to list the lowercase right on top of it. So if you get something like that where you're, you know, you thought it was a two color font and you hit two and it just gives you the lowercase, it just most likely means it's supposed to be a one color font. So the V, that's just for vertical. So if I want a vertical text, I can hit the V and I'll just drop it to a vertical text instead. If I click it again, it goes back. And then again, the B is just for breaking each letter apart. So if I do that, now I can control the S, the O. And most of the time we do this break apart, it's maybe it's mostly probably for vector text. And I can make like this letter and this letter a lot bigger. Just to kind of give it like a different look. And then our last one is just going to be for our monograms. And this is for the older monograms, not the universal ones. Um, so before they were just pretty much set up that once you selected the text and the monogram you wanted to use, you just click the M and then it shapes it into the correct monogram that it's supposed to be. So this one's our baseball, but we have our football. So again, it doesn't really look that good until you hit the M and then it shapes it like the football and cuts out the correct letters. So that's just kind of like a quick run through of all these. Um, but yeah, if you, we definitely have videos on all of them too. So if you need a little bit more, or if you want to go a little bit more in depth with them, just let us know and I can, we can point you to some more videos going through these uh, keys up here. All right. So once we set up our text, like we have here with our stadium, the next step is to create it into a live template. Now, I didn't do the Indians as a live template because most of the time it probably wouldn't work that well with it going from like a script font like this to in the live text form. So what we're going to do is create where it has the baseball. We're going to set that up as a live text. So any school or anything that, you know, if you work with a couple schools in the county, you can set one up for the Indians, the Mustangs. Um, the Hurricanes, the Seminoles, and you need just to set up one pretty much for each school 
and then we're able to quickly turn it into whatever sport we want. So the the mascot's pretty much the base, and then the sport would be the live text part, which we can easily switch around. So on this part with our live text, we're gonna go ahead and use all uppercase. We're gonna just type out three eyes. We're gonna switch it to an impact font. And once I do that, so it's the three eyes, impact font, all uppercase. And then up here we have our horizontal alignment. I'm just gonna center that. So those are the like three or four major steps that we wanna do when we're setting up a live text. Once I do that, now it's just kind of fitting it in my envelope. Um, someone asked, can you set up a live template in the athletic tails font? Um, you, you, we can, I'll, I'll, I'll go through that too. So we can do it. It's just, um, like lining up, you're not gonna, if you add the tail and stuff like that to it, it's going to probably, it will work, but not as well as we want it to. So we'd have to do like the Indians as the live text and then the tail we would add separately. And I'll, I'll go through that real quick just so you can kind of see it a little bit more. But with our live text, what I look for when I'm setting it up is the top part of my design is flat. So I know I'm not going to really edit that too much. It's more of that I need to, I'm going to have to bring this right side up this way. So I want to line up my top where it looks good and then I want to bring this left side down pretty much to the point where I think it's a good distance from here to the bottom of my tail to my text here that matches well with the distance from the top of my text here to the top of my tail so I might want to bring it down just a tad and then that looks pretty pretty good there and we can always move it around so we don't have to worry about it too much so once I have that set up, now I can use the envelope tool. So right here under effects, you'll see envelope. Control F7 is a shortcut. That's gonna pop up your window over here. And this is gonna be your envelope section. So we're gonna use the straight line option because it's just a straight line here coming up. So I don't need to worry about it like following a curve or anything like that. So we're just gonna hit add new. I'm going to select my right corner on this side, my bottom right corner, and I'm just pulling it up and trying to match that distance kind of all the way down here. So I don't want it to look like this where it's really close to the edge down here, but when it gets down here, it has more room. So I can either bring this down to match or I need to bring this side up to match it when it was stuck like that. Now once I change the shape, now it's set. So then I can select my text tool, click on these box, my three eyes. It's gonna pop up with its own edit text box. And now I can change this text to whatever I want it to say. So in our example, we use baseball. I can change it. It doesn't have to be stuck in impact anymore. So if you wanted to use a different font, you can do that too. And then I can just change it to white to make it look knocked out or, you know, whatever combination of colors I want to use. But now with our live template editor, I can hit find text. It's going to show a lot right now, but baseball is going to be the top one, which we can edit because it's showing just all of my text over here too. But baseball, I can come in here now select baseball and easily change that to soccer, football, cheer, dance. And now I have quick decals or shirts for the entire school. And the only thing that's changing is the text here. So instead of every time, you know, Indians dance want one, I have to recreate something different. It's all just a quick, live template now come in here select dance and then just change that to whatever sport 
I want. And we can even do mom of number 10. You know, anything like that will work with these texts. So it doesn't matter what we put in there. It's all going to, yeah, you don't want to. So if someone was asking, like, when we did the mom of, you know, number 23, the more text you put in here, it's going to like kind of bunch it up a little bit more. So we don't want to go too much. Um, but technically you can, you know, if this was print, I could have as many letters in there as I wanted. If I'm cutting this with vinyl, I want to always think about those things. Like if I do mom of 23 and 24 and 66, well, this, you know, depending on what material I'm using, this is now really small letters. This six alone is at less than a, pretty much a quarter of an inch by a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. So cutting that in like a glitter or something like that is going to be really small. So we don't want to, you know, make it too hard on ourselves. So when you, if you're using this for a vinyl design, try to keep it, you know, as nice as we can. Mama 23 will work fine, but we don't want to, you know, go crazy with it. Now printing, you can obviously, you know, printing is going to be a little bit easier. We don't have as much worries, but again, we don't want to put too much in there. So it's hard to read or, you know, just too much in general. So let's just change this. Let's do football for now. So now with our design, let's go ahead and bring this to a new page. Once we have this set, we can now start creating some mockups. So just to kind of get a feel, who who hasn't used our mockups before or yet? I know there's a couple people saying they just got the wizard, so I know there's gonna be a few. All right, so we have, yeah, we definitely have a few that are pretty new to it. So I'll run through it a little bit, a little bit slower. Um, if you guys have any questions, just let me know because the, the mock-ups aren't too complicated, but we definitely, we definitely get a lot of questions on them. So it's more of just a routine of doing every, like a few steps. And once you get those down, it's pretty simple, but the first few times just remembering to click certain buttons, that's where we'll see the most errors. All right. So first off, we have a couple different mock-ups. So let me just close this down so it almost pretty much starts where you'll see it. So when you first go to the mock-up page, you'll see this basic and advanced setting. For the most part, I just work out of the basic and we can edit everything that we, all the advanced settings, all that adds for us is our pricing and our background color, which we can change anyways. So let's just stick with the basic in this one. So the first thing you wanna do is select your template type. So we have a lot of different mockups already pre-programmed for you. So whether it be a quick design, quick product, quick mockup, um, the quick design is literally just showing your client your design with some information on it. Same with the mock-up. The quick product, we'll put it on like a t-shirt, car decal, you know, an actual product. And then we get into more of the proofs and order form. So we'll kind of go through some of the quick products and designs, and then we'll go through an order form and kind of setting up your business information for one of those two. So the one thing we with the mock-ups is... Let's start with a quick design. So here, the next thing we go to is our template detail steps. So the only option it gives us is the design. So on this one, all we need to do is highlight the design we want to use, hit save design, and then hit create mockup. So that's just going to put it on a, just a blank, pretty much, you know, very basic. It puts it on a black background. 
Um, I can change the background color like I said at this point. So that's one of our advanced settings is that you can preset the background color, which I tend to not do anyways just because I always change it. I feel like once I do like a color contrast with my shirt. So I tend not to even bother with that until I'm at this step anyways. All right, so it will, when you create this, it just makes like a sub page down here. So before you save like your final design, just know that in Corel, if you have these sub pages, it will save each page for you. So I don't know if you want them. If you don't, just right click and hit delete page and then you'll be left with your designs and not like five or six pages of mock-ups. Because every time you make one, it's gonna create a new page for you. All right. So quick product. This time, under template detail steps, product and design are listed. So the first step is finding the product we wanna put this design on. So our next tab down would be our product type. Now a lot of these are gonna be preloaded the custom area is everything where you're, you'll are you be able to add your own mock-up. So if you have your own tumbler, if you have your own t-shirt, hat, wall, anything we want to add in here, we can add. Um, but otherwise, you'll have these women's, men's, use, accessory, um, those four already pre-programmed in here. The hats are extra, um, but you'll have the four women's, men's, use, and accessory. So the first step is just finding that product we want to use. So let's say we want this on a men's shirt. I select men's. The next is our men's t-shirts that we have available. So just a basic t-shirt, long sleeve, or a hooded sweatshirt. So you're just going to pick which one we want to use. Let's say t-shirt. And then I can choose the front or the back. Most cases it's going to be the front, but we do have the back option as well. And you'll see that when you select it, change right there for you. So this is where it gets really important that we're following the right steps with the mockups. So essentially what we're doing is starting at the top tab and making our way down. So we have our product, the product type, the product, and then the product options, which is usually just the front or back. Once we have all those selected, I have to hit this save product. If I don't, and I go to the next step, then when I create the mock-up, it's going to give me an error. So I need to hit save product. You'll see down here, when I do that, product has been saved. So down here, it will let you know that your product has been saved. If you highlight over anything else, that will disappear. So just make sure when you click it, you see in that bottom left corner that your product was saved. Once we select the product, the next step is selecting the design. So the same thing we had when we just chose quick design, we're gonna to go to design. And at this point, all we're doing is highlighting the design we wanna use, hitting save design. And now, and again, when I do that down here, design has been saved. If you don't see that, it probably wasn't saved correctly. And if you don't save this, if I just do design, highlight it, and don't hit save, it's just gonna give me a red, a red box on my product. So if you see just a red box on whatever product you selected, it's because you didn't save your design. All right, so then I hit create mockup, and it throws it right there on my t-shirt for me. Now someone already asked what if you want a different color t-shirt. All the t-shirts that we have in here are color changing t-shirts. So if you don't like the placement, I can move the t-shirt and then I can also change the color. All right. So that's kind of just a basic you know, it's going to throw it on a product for you. So if you kind of just want, <coughs> excuse me, this type of mock-up is just kind of for a quick, hey, here's what it's going to look like on a t-shirt. Let me know if you like it. And then if they like it, then I'll do it, create it with an order form, 
and then we're you know then I'll send them the actual order form where they can fill it out and send it back. Now, whatever design we're using, let's say that I have the same product that I just used. So we're going to use the men's t-shirt. Now I have the same design, but this one here was 12 inches. <coughs> Excuse me. This one is five inches wide. <coughs> so when we set these up, we pretty much set it up that if we take a 12 inch design and put it on this t-shirt, <coughs> excuse me, this is the ratio or this is how it's going to fit on this t-shirt. So if you take, <coughs> if you're designing and you forget to resize it and it's at five inch, less than five inches and I send this to that t-shirt, <coughs> it's going to show up really small on your design like this. got all stuffed up <laughs> so if for some reason you have a design and it's coming in really small like this you since it's a vector you can easily just resize it yourself to the t-shirt however I want but just know that's why that is coming in really small is because the design you probably brought in and ratio to the t-shirt and stuff like that that's how it's gonna look yeah so you could definitely you could just delete this and start over or just since it's a vector we since it's a vector we can just resize it however we want <laughs> Matt's interrupting me again Typical, typical. Um, so we had another question. After you create the mock-up, is that when you put the watermark? Um, yeah, so depending on what mock-up you select, you'll have the choice of adding a watermark or not. So I could have selected watermark and added it. Um, or... Awesome, awesome. So this down here, this little W is a watermark too. So I can just click on that and add the watermark as well. But most of the products or order forms and stuff when we make those, we can add the watermark beforehand. And I'll do that next when we do the order form. So these are just kind of more basic, quick products, quick designs. Just to sh pretty much show your customer quickly, um, you know, instead of spending all this time or even, you know, creating an order form and sending that to them and then having them say, hey, I don't really like the way this looks on the t-shirt. Can you do this and then change it? I typically would send something like this quickly to them and say, hey, here's what it looks like on the color t-shirt that you wanted. Sometimes it's nice if you just add a quick background to so this little black box right here. If you select your design, it'll just add a background color. So I'll usually do something like that too, just so it gives them a little contrast. But other than that, that's kind of more of the quick mockups. And then once we're, once let's say they approve the design, that's when I would go ahead and make the order form for them. So here we get into more of the order forms and you'll see one shirt, two shirt, three shirt, four shirt, um, front, back, um, custom, so you can make your own mock-ups. <laughs> Tell them I said hi as well. Thank you. Um, so we can change all these. And just because it says four shirts, a lot of people get confused where it's like that you think it has to be kind of like four shirts. It's four, ob four designs, four objects. So we can do a shirt shorts, hats, mugs, all on the same order form if we wanted to. So it doesn't have to be four shirts. It can be three different items. For real. I, it, I think it is the weather change because it's, well, earlier today it was 
like 70 60s and the last like two hours it's dropped almost into the 40s so i think it's just a lot of the change in weather is making my nose all messed up yeah yeah so even yeah with the with the shirts the front and back too it will work the same way um even if you don't want it to be a front and back t-shirt, you can show two items that way too. Hey, Connie. Long time no, no see. <laughs> I'm a Florida boy. Everyone's making fun of me because I'm saying it's cold, but it's cold for me. All right. So now we're going to get into more of the order forms. <laughs> So before we get, before we actually create one of these order forms, one of the cool things about them is I'm just going to do a quick save product, create mock-up. And the reason why I have two red boxes in this area is because I didn't select a design. So I just saved my product and hit create mock-up. So it gave me the order form, but it doesn't give me my design because I didn't select the design. <coughs> so be, uh, the reason I did this is because I just wanted to show you all the information that will be preset when you set up your all your business information in the mock-ups. So you'll see your the name of the company, the phone number, the email, the website. Um, some more information pretty much will be repeated over here. Your address, the company name. Down here you'll see the company name too. So all those we can set up. So every time we create an order form, it matches your company's information. So to do that, let's go ahead and delete these mockups here so to do that on our mockup page you'll see this little drop down yours probably says description if you've never um, edited or added your business information or even if you did it might still say description because we didn't know that we could move these up and replace description with our with our information so to go through this and edit and add all your information, your watermark, your logo, we're gonna collect or we're gonna click this pen or pencil right here. And it's gonna pop up this window that says TRW edit watermarks and logos. So now we're gonna pretty much enter in all of our information. So if you select the description, which is the one that's going to be there, you can kind of use that as a, just a way to fill out in your information. So the description is just pretty much most of, most of the people are going to have, um, just one company, but there might be multiple companies using your software, or you might have like one business for decals and then another business for shirts or you know most of it will probably all be incorporated into one but if you have multiple companies or you know a friend wants you to make something for them with their watermark you can add as many as you want but the description is just pretty much your company's name which company you know what which one what it's gonna help you remember that hey this is my trw company information hey this is um my friend's company information or, you know, a side business or anything like that. So description, most of the time you'll see, we just put TRW, TRW2. So we'll just keep it going and I'll just put TRWW. The watermark text is what you actually want it to say going across and protecting your image. So some people put their email or sorry, their website. Some people put their company name. Some people just like it to say copyright. So whatever we want it to say, we can put through here. So most like what we used to do is just the rhinestone world. 
or rhinestoneworld.com. The transparency is how well you want that watermark to show up. So 80 is going to be the preset. And that's a pretty good number to have in there. The lower, the higher the number you go, the more it's going to show up. All right, let me let me make sure that's true. But I believe, yeah, I think it's. I'll have to double check, but I think it's the higher we go, the more it shows up. And then your logo path, you'll just select this arrow here. It'll take you to your pictures, or it'll take you to a folder. Sorry, it popped open on my other screen, so let me move it real quick. Um, so it'll pop up. You can go to your pictures or wherever you have it. Um, so like, you'll want to pick some type of picture file, so PNG, JPEG, you know, something like that. Just select it. So this one's my webinar for tonight. So if I just select that you'll see the path to get to that logo. So business name, the rhinestone world or TRW, whatever I want to show up. Web, just your email or your, um, your website name. So again, you might have some stuff that repeats. That's okay. Just copy and paste it, make it easy. And then just your phone number, email, street, um, and city, state, zip. Now, if you're working from home and you don't want people to like know where your home address is, you can leave this stuff blank, anything like that. Um, otherwise, you can just fill in the, all that information. I always forget what street we're on, so I just use fake street. Um, Bradenton, Florida, 34243. So this is where it's really important that once we're done with filling out all this information, we have to hit this add button up here. If I just click save and exit out, Everything I just did isn't saved. So we want to make sure we hit save, or sorry, we want to make sure we hit add and then save it. And once you click add, you'll see how it just added this into our information here. So now if I want this to be my, pretty much my default, all I have to do is select the one I want, click the up arrow, it'll move it to the top, I click save. Now when I go to my mockups, my TRWW is there first. All right. So now let's go ahead and do an order form. So again, order form one shirt. All right, let's do two shirts. That way I can show you. So our product type, our first one, let's say we'll stick with our men's. Let's do a long sleeve, front, save that. Now, because I picked two different objects or two different products, I'm, it's going to give me a couple extra drop downs this time. So it's going to say shirt one and design one. So on shirt one, we have our men's long sleeve front selected. So I save my product. I drop down to design one and I select the design I want on that t-shirt. So if I have my design here, it's five inches wide. This one's 12. I want to select this one because it's going to fit better on that t-shirt. So I hit save design. And now I just go to shirt two and now I can select my second product. So this time I'm going to do accessories, car decal. Let's make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to save my product. So it doesn't matter if I have anything selected. This is just saying that we want it on a car decal. So I hit save product. Drop this to design two. So shirt two wasn't a shirt. It's my car decal, but it doesn't 
it's gonna always say shirt one and shirt two. So even if we're not using a shirt as my second object or you know mock product, it's still gonna be labeled as shirt two. So even though it's my car decal, it's still under shirt two and design two. I'll select, save design. And now once I save both of those, I can hit my create mockup. So now on the left hand side, I have my men's long sleeve shirt, 30 bucks. Here's the logo that I connected. Like I said, it was just my webinar for tonight. So your logo is going to pop up right in the middle here. All my information's right here. Order form 2016. All my information here. My car decal and 27 bucks. Now, there's a couple different things we need to still change. Obviously, our order form 2016, that's a little outdated. Um, and my prices probably aren't correct. The long sleeve isn't too bad, but my car decal should be a lot less. And typically, it's going to give you on your car decal, it kind of blows up the design so they can see it a little bit better here. I tend to like to just select that part and delete it out. And then I end up making my decal just a little bit bigger here so it can stand out. So that's what I like doing with my car decals. Again, it's just anyone can, you know, you can edit it however you want. It's just an extra little box that they, the decal has on it or this product image has. So I just delete it out, highlight that section, and just make my decal a little bit bigger. Just throw it just like that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if we're able, oh, yeah, so someone said they had seen the watermark. Let me go back, because what I didn't do is actually select my watermark. So, thank you, thank you, Joseph. So, let's go ahead and go back real quick. Same thing. Let's just do... Order form, let's do two again. So shirt one, we did men's, long sleeve, save that. Design one, save design. Shirt two, accessories, car decal, save product. Design two, save design. Now, before we create the water or the mock-up, we have some uh, options down here. So we have the watermark. So if I check that, I check my logo. I don't have any stones in this design, so I don't need to make them um, look, you know, I don't need to check the uh, simulate stones button. I hit create mock-up. And now you'll see the rhinestone world right on top. And it's just got a layer on it right there. So you can still come through and change all the t-shirts, everything like that. Um, again, I'll just highlight that section. Make that a little bit bigger. And make that stand out. Now... <clears throat> For the rest of our design, I can hit my li I can go to my live template editor, hit find text, order form 2016. Let's just change that real quick to 2019. So that's changed. Uh, my 27 bucks here. I'm gonna go ahead and change that. So I can click on it and edit it this way or use my live template editor, whatever's easier and make that $8. Um, so someone asked, can you change the color of the watermark? So the watermark is just kind of actually in a power clip. So if you edit power clip, 
it should allow us to grab the text and change the color. So yeah, so you'll see how it just has the rhinestone world text through here. So I can actually rotate this in any direction I want. So if I click the center here, I can rotate this. And once I'm in this edit box, I just select the color I want. So I just change it to red, hit this stop editing, and then that will change the color for you. Yeah, you can definitely move it to the front. I wouldn't do it until we're more done with the design. And that's just a right click, order to front or back. I just moved it to the front, so it's not giving me that option. But you can definitely move that to the front of your page and see it a little bit better. I wouldn't do it till the end because then when you try to select different things, you might have to like grab it that way. But definitely we can we can move that to the front of the page once we're done. Yeah, so to change it, if you select just this box behind it where you see the text, it will pop up with these little windows down here. And when you hover over it, they'll light up. You just hit Edit Power Clip, select that text somewhere, change it to whatever color you want, hit the check mark, and then when you're done, you can just right click or Control Home is the shortcut to put it to the front of the page. <laughs> so any any questions on the mockups? So let's go back to our main page and now we'll go over creating our second design. Oh, great question. So on our box here, and I know in the five, this is something that we wanted to change and edit, but someone was asking that, you know, because it doesn't have the small, large to apply to that, um, we can, Trying to think of what the we could probably just bring this down this way, make this box a little bit bigger, and then I'll just delete all these extra things out, and then I would just do quantity and total, and then that way you'll still have a little box where you can edit it. So you can definitely edit these boxes down if needed. I know with that's one of the things we definitely are working on with the five is to have cus more custom because right now all of them are set up to more of like a t-shirt or stuff like that where if you had a bag or a decal, it's not necessarily going to look the best. So um, you can edit these boxes down. You just click on them up top here. You'll see kind of like the rows and columns. Just bring those down to two and two, and then you'll be set up for decal. And you can always change the size and text of all these as well. So nothing in these mockups are like permanent or set. So we can go through and change all the different text and make it look a little bit nicer. <laughs> All right, so with our second design, pretty much just gonna make this, this is again from scratch. Um, so yeah, someone asked about the five, um, when you update to the five, do you pay a fee to upgrade? So the yes, um, the only time we really, 
you'll pay a fee to upgrade is when we go from like a full version to the next one. So the four to the five. Um, now, during the release of the four, you can see up top now it'll say 4.25. So all those releases are either fixes or updates to the current version that we've released for free. So when we first like came out with the 4.0, the live templates were some of our biggest features. But when we started it, all it had was like an open template, change artwork, and a find text button. Um, so through that, we've eventually added the add artwork, the height width, the break apart, merge three, color, magic, boundary, contour, all these extra features that as we kind of worked with it, we're like, oh, that'd be a lot cooler if we just, or a lot easier if we added this button in there. So any upgrade to the version you're on is free. When you go to the four to the five, all you do is pay the difference. So whatever, you know, right now I think it's 469 for the 4.0. Usually our next version is 90 to a hundred dollars more. So you only pay the difference. So let's just say it's 560 or 469. Let's say it goes to 569. You'll pay the hundred dollar difference. So whatever you have invested stays invested. You don't pay, you know, 469 now. Let's say that we release it in a month. You don't pay another 569. You always just pay the difference and we don't make you upgrade. So we still, you know, let's say all the new additions to 5.0 aren't really necessary for what you do or you're very comfortable with the four there's no need to upgrade then um, or you know a lot of people might just be working with rhinestones so you know the version three and four didn't really make sense for them because all the rhinestone features for the most part stayed the same so we support everything back to yeah, I think it was the I started at the 2.0, but I think it was like the 1.14 or something like we even had before, which is very, very basic, which is pretty much just the stones. Um, so at any point you can upgrade. Let's say you had the 2.0, you waited till the 4.0. All you do is pay the difference from the 2 to the 4. So um, that's how, you know, it's all, and that's how it will stay. It's always been like that. So it, whatever you have invested stays invested and we don't, it's not like, hey, if you don't upgrade, we can't, it's not compatible anymore, or we don't service that. Um, we'll still help you out, even if you're on like the 2.0 stuff. So, all right. All right. So, now going on to this design here. This is pretty basic. Um, it's a pretty basic design, mostly made from just like Corel shapes and stuff like that. Maybe that we didn't know that we could kind of create. Um, yeah, someone asked about our, the 4.25, the only difference, I know a lot of people were saying that with the 4.21, the 4.25, the only reason we upgraded that is because when we went to 3D Cart, like our new website, <coughs> we had to link it to that site. So the 4.21 to the 4.25, the only, there's no difference in it. It just allows it to, <coughs> if you purchase it, once we had the new website, if you had the 4.21 version, it wouldn't match up with that site. And everyone was calling in and not getting serial codes. So we updated the 4.25 and that helped with that issue. So don't feel like you need to upgrade if you don't want to. It's not going to necessarily give you anything extra. It's just going to, it was just for the, anyone that was coming from 3d cart <coughs> um, someone asked is it better to upgrade when it first comes out um, yes and no um, you'll get the features a lot quicker but <coughs> there's usually the one thing we never do is run like a discount on the software so if you ask anybody everyone has always paid the same thing with the software sometimes there might be like a bonus mini pack that you get by purchasing it the first night or something like that where you get something additional so that's when it can be worth it plus you'll get all the features right away <clears throat> but if you decide to wait four months to get everybody's review on it the only thing you'll miss out is on that possibly like free pack but money like 
price wise is going to be the exact same from the first night to the last, you know, until we update to the 6.0. So this is a pretty, um, again, mostly just using kind of circles and <coughs> some basic shapes from the software. So this outside rim where we have kind of like the spikes, um, does everyone know, does anyone know how to quickly make this type of shape using a Corel tool? So yeah, a so a couple people are saying starburst. So um, it's yeah, we're gonna start with the star. I don't know if they're just shouting out their favorite candy, or if they're saying you know the star shape. But starburst, I'll give it to you if you said that. Um, <laughs> so over here, oh, you guys might have seen this star shape already right here. So. Under your basic tools, it'll probably look like the polygon tool first. If you highlight or if you select that and hold, you'll go to the star. So once we're in the star, I can hold control, draw a perfect star shape for me. Now, obviously this star looks nothing like we have here. So to get to this point, when I click on the star, and this goes for a lot of different shapes and tools in the software, Notice how this bar right here, where it has like letter and all my page size and everything like that. When I select different objects, you see how that bar completely changes into something else? Like if I could select my rectangle tool, how that bar has different features on it now. So as you select different tools, this area right here will kind of give you the options or features that it has um, to go with it. So when I select the star, You'll notice how it has the points or sides and the sharpness. So right now it's a five pointed star. So if I just select this and I go to 60, well now I have 60 points around this star. Now, again, doesn't match up too well to what we have here. So the next thing we want to do is our sharpness. So I'm going to bring this down to about 10. And now you'll start to see how this is taking more of the shape we want. So I'll go to five. And now we're about where our design looks here. The only thing, the only big difference is I think the points on it are a little bit less. So you can see as you change these points, you can get different looking shapes. So once I have that kind of outside created, then I can just draw another circle. And to make like a perfect circle or a perfect star or anything like that, if you hold control while you're making the shape, it'll make it perfect every time. So let's add a little bit of color to this so we can see. So I have my two shapes. So I'm just going to go ahead and center those. So I'm just selecting both of these and hitting P as in Paul on my keyboard. And those are just going to center just like that. So what I'm doing now is where I have this circle lined up is essentially going to take away all my blue behind it. I want to subtract that out. So again, if I select both of these items, I can come up top and hit trim. And it will trim out the rest of my design or all that blue underneath. All right, so now we have our next circle kind of right here. So to recreate that, I'm just going to bring that in a bit. And this is one thing we can think about beforehand. Instead of like going back and adding stones to this, I can add the stones now or later on. Whatever might be easier. Now would probably be a little bit easier to line it up. 
but I'll show you both ways just in case. So like right now, if I wanted to add like a stone in between, I could just select this. Let's make it red so I can call it red. Um, to add another circle, so what I did here is we had our design set up like this. I centered them both, and then I just trimmed it. And then this middle circle, I just held shift, and if you hold shift and bring it in, it just makes it go in a little bit. So this white area is cut out. There's actually nothing there. So it's just those two, that original circle that I still have. So I can come through here kind of retract this circle a little bit. And if I go to my place and fill, I can do an island to the outside, add stones, auto, auto, island fill, and that will add my stones right in there for me. So if it's easier to do that now, you can, or we can always add it at the end as well. So let's add it at the end and just pretend we forgot to add the stones. And I'll show you in case we make that mistake, how we can fix it without starting over um, from the beginning. So I have my circle. I'm gonna make a copy, so I'm just gonna do Control C, Control V. And what I'll do too is, so I have both of them layered on top, I'll make one blue again. And then I'm gonna hold Shift, grab one of these corners, and again, just move it in a bit. So this part is gonna be my second band. So again, I'm gonna select my circle here, my blue one, hold shift, select the red. And again, we're just gonna trim that. So now I have my blue with this red um, line, our circle going through it as well. All right. So that's kind of the basic setup that we have here. Now, we want to leave this light blue and let me just make it a green so it doesn't get confused with the outside. We want to leave this in here because this is what we're going to allow us to, this circle is what we're going to put our text on. So when we have this circle, this text going around our design like this, you don't see it. But if I go to the wireframe, there's actually a circle there too. So it's the same circle that we have here. We just took the color away from the circle so we don't see it. But our text is actually on a path around this circle. And that's how we get it to go so nicely around it is because it's actually on this circular path. So to make that disappear, if, it, if you select this circle and you left click this X here or left click the X on top of your color palette, it'll make that circle just it's still there but it's just kind of clear if it helps while we're designing you can right click a color and it'll outline that circle in that color so that's just like the outline of our circle and actually what we'll do is we can add this at the end too before because eventually what we're going to want to do is add our bars going through it and that might mess up our circle so I'm actually going to delete this out right now and we'll add it again at the end so now our next step is just going to be creating two rectangles so it's about eight inches wide less than a quarter inch tall you're just going to select one make a copy and bring it down and then once you have those set up, you're gonna weld them together. And then again, just to make sure everything's centered, we're gonna hit the P as in Paul key on our keyboard. And that's just gonna make sure everything's centered in my design, which it looks good. So then I'm gonna select my bars here. I'm gonna come down to my live template editor. We have our magic boundary set up to 0.04 with the remove shapes behind checked. So when I do that, I, I select my black bars, magic boundary. Oh, let's get, 
So the reason it did that is because this design here has contours around it and it clears any part of the design that has contours. So I'm just gonna move that to the front of the page and then you'll see that it doesn't give us any issues. And what it's supposed to actually do is remove any pieces around your bars. So you can see how before they're overlapping, you click the magic boundary and now it clears everything around it. So this middle part here, I can just double click on the blue. Remember those nodes that we did in the first design? Those are gonna pop up. I'm gonna highlight that section, delete. Same thing with our red, highlight, delete. Come over to this side, highlight, delete. Select the blue, highlight, delete. So that just clears out our area just like that in our design. So now we can set up our text, our live text, just like we did in our first design too. So remember with that, we're gonna do the three I's. Let's do all uppercase. We're gonna select our impact font. And we're gonna make sure that horizontal alignment is centered. And this part, I'm just lining it up. Just like that. Now once I have that set, I'm gonna to go to my envelope. We're gonna hit add new and apply. Because I didn't, remember on this football one, when I dragged this corner up, it automatically, when I did that, it automatically applied my envelope shape. So on this one, I didn't bring up this corner at all. So because I didn't do that, I need to not only hit add new, but I have to hit apply to make sure it brings in that envelope effect. Once it does that, I can use my text tool, click on that, and then I can change this to whatever text I want. So now I can add the Mustangs or use my live template editor and I can use it this way. So I can change this to Pirates whatever mascot I want to use will fit in there perfectly now. <clears throat> so the reason we start with three letters, most of the time the text we use is going to be at least three letters. But if I started with the word Mustangs and add my envelope to that, if I used any other word besides must, like any characters like USA, it would end up looking like this because it isn't lar it's not the same number of characters as Mustang, so it won't stretch it out. So the reason we start with three is because even if we use you know three characters in there, it's still gonna stretch it out to fit that whole area. Yeah, so we had a question come in about when it's like a when it's an envelope like this with the text. When you're not actually changing the shape of it at all, because like our football text here, we added that slant to it. So when we do that, it's automatically setting our envelope is a good way to think of it. Here, if I just write out this text and I come in and hit add new it's not technically setting it until I hit apply. If I make the slightest change to this text, if I just bring up this little piece like that, it's applied, it's set. But because we didn't make any change at all, we have to make sure we're hitting apply and that's setting the envelope for us. Now, the design you see here, the Mustang text is a three color text or um, you'll see in our live template editor, our merge three color live text. So that's a three color live text. The reason it's set up like this is because what we want you to do with it is once you edit it, where this white area is, it's actually pre-set up where it's two text fields layered right on top of each other. Once we highlight this and hit merge three color live text, it 
takes out that middle area and now we can send this to the cutter it's cut ready so this like white contour that we have around it when it's set like this gets removed and now it's an easy so it's pretty much this white box or white contour we have around it and eventually gets subtracted through the back layer once you hit our merge three color live text and then I'll just change that color back to green so we're gonna set up our design like that so to do that we have our Mustangs text here so what we're gonna do is come up top here to our TRW toolbar we're gonna do the contour tool we're gonna set our first contour to a black or just a dark color if you see something like this where the A doesn't have a contour, don't worry because as we make it bigger, you'll start to see that it gets added on correctly. So the first one, I usually go a little bit, so it's set to about 0.11. So once we have that set, we go ahead and do a copy and paste. So we're pasting these right on top of each other. And now our top layer, I'm going to select the black contour. I'm going to switch that to white and I'm going to bring it in just a little bit just like that. So just by doing that now we have our three color live text. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one just so when I hit find text we just have the Mustang show up now. So now because it's set up like that now when I change Mustangs, it changes everything at the same time. So it changes both layers for me. Yeah, because we did the copy and paste, it has both layers and we copied that envelope so it's gonna work the same way as our both layers. So when I'm ready to cut this, or once once I save this design I want to save it as a live text because if I don't save it as a live text I won't be able to come back and edit it so when we're getting this design ready let's say okay I open this design instead of Mustangs they want to be the Seminoles so I come in here hit Seminoles if you see something like this where it doesn't have the full contour just make it a little bit bigger and that seems to fix the issue just like that now to get this cut ready, all I do is highlight that section, merge three color live text, and now that's ready to cut. Once I click this merge three color live text, it's not going to be, you're not going to be able to edit this design anymore. So you always want to edit the text first, then add the, then get it cut ready. So we don't want to save our design like this because now it's just stuck as the Seminoles. Unless, you know, I had to cut this or I had a client that wanted this and ordered a few times I could easily save it just so it's cut ready but I don't want to save over my original live template because then I can't go back and change it uh, the live template editor if you have the 4.0 if you click our little docker window the first one will be the live template editor so you just go ahead and click that it'll open up hit find text and then you'll be able to see your text. So let's go back. All right, so find text. We got our Mustangs, good. All right. Switching up the colors a bit. All right, so now this is kind of the base and now we can just add a little bit of extra just to make it stand out so now I can draw that circle again put it to the center of my page so it fits in there nicely and now I can add my other text so this one's a little bit different from the live text um, it's still technically a, it's a live text version because we can still edit it but we're not setting any envelopes with it. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to type in Lakewood Ranch. Uh, 
Um, pick the font we want to use, so we'll, we'll mix it up a little bit. So once I have this set, I'm going to come up top to our TRW toolbar. You'll see this A on a slanted line. That's fit text to path. Go ahead and left click. And then when you approach your circle, you'll see how the text kind of snaps to it. And then to place it, you're just going to left click. Once it's on that line, then I can move it in a bit to make it fit. So I can left click twice and I can move it anywhere on this line I want. So if I want it more in the middle, I can just drag it up and then it's placed right in the middle. And then I can take my second text, let's just say athletics, same font, click my A, bring it towards my text here. Now the main thing you'll probably notice right away is that it's upside down. So once we set that, I can come over here, mirror it twice. So I'll do it horizontal and then a vertical. And then you might have to move it a little bit back on that line. And then it's set just like that. And if sometimes these letters might be a little close depending on the text we're using. If that's the case, you can always use the text spacing tool on the software to help space those out a little bit. So now, if I come over to my live template editor and hit find text, you'll see Lakewood Ranch, Mustangs, and Athletics. So I can easily come in here where it says Lakewood Ranch. I can change this to Braden River. However, if I keep typing, it will work its way around that circle. So if that's the case, and I add a lot more text here, that's okay, I just have to remember to come back and just bring it in a bit. And then I can make that fit back on my design. And I can, you might have to rotate it. Usually when you see that red line show up, that means it's in the middle of your text. So now, because I made it so small, if I type in Lakewood Ranch again, it might not fill up as much room as I wanted. So then again, you can use your point size up here if you want and just edit it quickly that way too. And then next, I think we just added a couple stars. So I just did like one here, one up here and one here. And actually what we can do is let's do one across the middle. I'm gonna weld those two and then just drag them up so I know they're equal. And then I'll make one more, center it, and then oops. just drag that straight up so I know it's centered. All right, so now we have this circle. If I right click the X, it'll get rid of that line so it looks like it's not there. So this is how the design would be saved. So then all you have to do is come in and hit find text, edit it however you want. Now, if I go to cut this, you'll see how this circle is still part of our design. So does anyone know how we get rid of this circle and keep our text exactly where it is? All right, so that one, yep, exactly. The break apart effects will, will fix that issue for us. So, when you see this three color live text, this setup like this, you have to highlight this section 
and hit Merge 3 Color Live Text. Once you do that, it breaks this up and gets that cut ready. Next, we still have our Lakewood Ranch text and our athletics, but it's if I select this circle, it grabs everything and moves it. And this is this you'll see this a lot too. Let's say I want to change the color of this Lakewood Ranch and athletics to the green. So a lot of people will select it. It looks like it's selected. I go to hit green and it fills that entire circle. Because it's connected to the circle, it thinks you want to change everything, including the circle, to the green. That's not the case. So what we need to do is double click into the text where we're editing it, where it looks like we're editing the text. I can select it all and then just select green or gray, whatever colors I want to use. So if you select just, you know, if you just select athletics and you hit red, it's going to turn not only the text, but that circle red too. So if you see that, that's why. Now, <clears throat> so our next step, once we have that done, is getting rid of this circle. So all you have to do at that point is highlight and hit break apart effects. And you'll notice that circle just disappears. So now this design is cut ready. I could go ahead and weld. Now, one thing is too, if I hit find text, you'll notice that my Lakewood Ranch and Athletics is still showing up. But if I go to edit any of these texts, because I removed that circle, watch what happens when I click Lakewood Ranch. It just moves it and makes it just a plain text going straight. So if you see that, it's just because you broke the circle that it was on and it no longer can follow that path, so it just makes it a regular text. <clears throat> so this is the point where I would come through and weld all my green together. Select all my gray, weld all that together. And let's just make that black gray too. So it's just a two color design. I can go to my live temp or my wizard, go ahead and go to my mockups or sorry, my templates, depending on what I want to use, I could pick whatever separator I want. I'll just use the regular separator and that will just separate by color. Yeah, so great question. So when we have this design set up, Once it's set up like this, where you hit find text and you still see everything, this is our saving point. So this is where we want to save our design because this makes it still a live template. So if I save this as a live template one or just, you know, live template basic, then I can come in. What you'll want to do is come in, select the text. You know what? This is Brain River. They're the pirates. And we can keep the athletics. All right, so now these, these aren't my right colors. That's okay. Now, before I change the colors, I'm just gonna get it cut ready. So I'll go ahead and highlight the, we wanna do the merge three color first. Um. To go back to your pick tool, if you hit the space bar, it'll fill, it'll go back and forth to the last tools you, you, you had. So I had my pick tool and my font selected or my text tool. So by hitting the space bar, it just goes back and forth to each one. So with this design, if I select everything and hit merge or break apart effects first, my three color live text won't work because it's already broken apart. So we need to make sure we do our merge three color first, then I can highlight everything break apart and the break apart gets rid of that circle. And once I do that, then it's a lot easier to come in, 
select all the same color, make that red, and we'll make all the gray black. So now I just completely changed this to my Pirates Athletics. So at this point, I could separate it like I just did, and I would save that as Pirate Athletics ready to cut. Or, you know, that file I would save too, but it's a ready to cut file and it goes just in my Brain River folder. My other one, when I have it set up where it's still, we can edit it. This is where I'll want to save it. So I can go to File, Save As. I'll go to my TRW template folder. And to get to that, it's that same path. So it's the PC, C drive, users, public, public documents, the Rhinestone world, and TRW templates. And I can create, like I have my individual templates. To create a folder, you just right click, go to view, uh, sorry, go to new and add a folder. And you can just call it basic templates, sports templates, anything, you know, to help, you know, custom templates. And then you'll just save it right in there. So I have my individual templates in here. I even have it categorized into sports. Let's say this one's not a sports, it's just a basic one. So I'll do um, basic high school live template. So I'll hit save. Now I can go to my open template Go to my individual templates. Right here you'll see basic high school. Go to view, extra large. Yep, that's the one I want. Double click it. It'll bring it right in. Uh, it looks like I saved something else with it, but hit find text and now I can go ahead and edit it. So we wanna save it as a live template and then here, once we're done editing everything, that's when I can save this as like my Mustangs athletics ready to cut or anything like that. Um, so with the separation, that's a built-in feature. So let's go ahead. Oh, let's break those apart. So I'm just going to weld all that. So it's a two color design. So with our separator, that's gonna be under your templates tab. If I'm using vinyl, usually I'll use the vinyl overcut feature. And if you left click, it'll just set it up just like that. Oh, I didn't mirror that last one here. So let's go do that real quick. So I'm welding that. So if I left click, It'll just separate by color. If I right click, it will do the same thing, but it will mirror it so it's more cut ready. And then if I wanted this for, let's say, a, de a two color decal, I can make it five and a half inches. This time I'm going to hold shift left click and it'll add registration marks so it's really easy to line up for me so with your separator or in your templates tab you can right click to mirror left click for original and then shift click to add registration marks for decals Um, so someone asked why do you use the magic separator instead of vinyl overcut to get it cut ready um, Typically actually I use the vinyl overcut instead of the separator um, The vinyl overcut just helps with Making sure those and like you don't have any of those if you ever use vinyl and you have those little pieces that like Aren't all the way cut through and kind of snag a little bit the vinyl overcut will help with that feature um 
So that's why I tend to use the vinyl overcut instead. Tell them five minutes and we'll be done and that can go live again. <laughs> um, so yeah, I tend to use the vinyl overcut instead because it helps with that. Usually when we separate and give someone a design, we use a basic separator just because we don't want to mess with anybody's settings. So if you ever get a design from us, and let's say you have your design like this, it's just separated into two colors, but I want to add a vinyl overcut feature, I can still highlight that, come to my bonus cut, and do a vinyl overcut, and that will set those up just like that. So you grab the stone. And that's same with our stone two plus cut. If this was a rhinestone design, I would do the rhinestone section with a stone two plus cut. And that goes around each cut twice without lifting up. And it just allows for more accurate cutting and nicer cut lines. All right. So I know Matt's going live in a second. So we'll wrap up tonight's webinar okay so the the bonus cut the bonus cut is only for if let's say you purchase a design that's a rhinestone design from us or one of our old vector files that's you're not able to edit it will come most of the time like let's say that you purchase this design it would come just like this maybe without probably the registration marks unless you requested that, but it would come separated and you'd have these yellow boxes. They have already been templates created there for you. So technically you could just highlight this, send it over to your cutter and you're good. But if you're used to using the vinyl cut feature or the stone plus feature, you don't want to highlight your design and then add another feature or another template to it because these are already the separated templates. So if I highlighted these two and click vinyl overcut, see how it gives me two blank boxes here and now this one's one long cut box. It's registering, instead of registering this as two designs, it's registering it as one and thinks you want to make this into a vinyl overcut like one design instead of two. So the bonus cut is only intended for if you already have templates created, they'll add features to it on top of it. So the bonus cut, if I want if I knew I was using this for vinyl and I had glitter vinyl and I wanted the vinyl overcut feature, instead of clicking this up here, I just click the bonus cut and then it'll add the vinyl overcut feature for me without creating additional templates or you know giving me those kind of combined templates instead. So most of the time, if you're creating your own design like we just did and you're separating it, you'll use these regular separators like the Magic Vinyl Overcut, the Stone Plus, or the Magic Separator. If you purchase the design for us and you open it and you see something like this where it already has like the cut file and the files ready to cut, this is where you can highlight and add, you know, the stone cut or the vinyl double cut or overcut in addition to the, like what's already been created for you. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you for all the comments. Um, we'll wrap it up a little quick tonight just because I know Matt's trying to go live before it gets too late. Um, so, Pillar, do you know if he's going YouTube? Oh, he is live. Okay, so he didn't wait. <laughs> all right, well, we'll end up tonight. Um, is he on Facebook or YouTube? Or Instagram? YouTube. Okay, so he's over on YouTube live. So you guys go ahead and check that out now. Um, I'll get this up on YouTube as quickly as possible. And just because you guys were awesome tonight, um, usually we don't do this with free webinars, but 
I'll go ahead and add this uh, Mustang design that we created tonight in here as well. Um, I'm not going to do the Indians one just because it's only going to help someone that has Indians where you could just purchase the font and create, you know, endless one. So we'll do the one design here. I'll add that in there for you guys. Um, and otherwise, thank you guys so much for your coming. Thanks for all the comments. Really appreciated. Hope you guys had a great new year. Um, Long Beach next weekend and Matt's live now. So go check that out. Um, any questions, give us a call at 941-755-1696 or shoot us an email at info at the rhinestoneworld.com. Always to remember to ask for Gabe. Otherwise, you guys have a great night. Uh, thank you for attending. And I'll probably do another one Friday. Um, if you guys have any suggestions, let me know. Probably do it midday. Um, but anything you guys are looking for, just let me know. And I'm definitely going to end up doing one on Friday. All right, Valentine's Day is done. That's a, that's a good topic right there. So maybe I'll try to incorporate some of those in there. All right, guys, have a great night. Ooh, Connie, have fun.